Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and it's time to get those uh, butt plugs twirling like it's a Beyblade because we got some pretty juicy things today. Now, if you don't know what Audacity is, it's a free open source cross-platform audio software. And if you've been noticing, they had some pretty cool themes. I enjoyed it. Now, most content creators that I know use Audacity. In fact, people who aren't content creators and they just like to mess around with audio files use Audacity. It's a free program anybody can download and anybody can use. Now, the reason why we're talking about a uh, an audio software is because apparently it's spying on you and this is something where i kind of want to you know sort of dial down a lot of misinformation and i really want to get rid of the fear mongering i think fear mongering in computers is pretty hand in hand uh i've been kind of guilty of it in my opinion you know where i looked at things like valorant or whatnot where i genuinely provide an honest uh, look at something but there's no way to avoid a level of invoking fear mongering right there's no way to avoid it but there's the best way to educate people. So let's go look at what Audacity is all about, all right? Now, for first things first, it was purchased by this Muse group or whatever, and they eventually uh, purchased Ultimate Guitar in 1998, or sorry, founded it, and then eventually in 2021, they ended up buying Audacity, they bought StaffPad, and they launched their music group. Now, if you look at Muse Group's LinkedIn, you can tell that they're hosted in Cyprus, Great Britain, and two locations in Russia. And then when you look even deeper into the WSM group, Group. This is a group that's hosted in Kaliningrad, and they actually own, for apparently according to the LinkedIn, Ultimate Guitar, Muse Score, Muse Class. So there's a level of understanding that... Uh they own, Russia owns Audacity at this point, right? How you can go and buy an open source product when the source is freely available for everyone is a whole topic for another reason. Now, this caused Audacity to be in the whole, like, news reports, at least for our cybersecurity guys and his computer people. Uh, Audacity sends your personal data to Russia and other third parties. Audacity 3.0 called spyware over data collection changes. And not for children, Audacity fans dropped the F-bomb. <laughs> They're talking about about forks, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, of course, you can see these are some pretty uh, inflammatory articles, right? But they're not entirely wrong. I want to preface this before we go in that I don't want to make it look like Russia, China, or the United States are bad guys. Here's a here's a red pill for you to swallow. They're all bad people regarding data security. You know, when we looked at Valorant in China, there was definitely a case to be made that every Chinese tech firm has to backdoor private data to the actual government. It's kind of written into laws over there. Uh, Russia is it's kind of weird. I don't know if they're trying to be Soviet Union like they were before or go with modern times. And when it comes to the United States, uh, we've got agencies like the National Security Agency that I'm going to bet my left testicle on are probably spying on its own citizens. You cannot escape your data being stolen and tracked, okay? But you can do a lot to at least mitigate and minimize it as much as you can, which is what we're going to be looking at. So Audacity, like I showed you earlier, is a tool all of us use. Right now, it's recording all of my audio tracks. Okay, just so I can edit this video later on. But if we go to the desktop privacy notice, all right, there's a couple things we want to read, okay? Number two, personal data. What does Audacity collect and why? The very limited types of personal data that we may collect about you and the reasons why we process are as follows, okay? So let's look at it, why we collect it. So app analytic and improving our app. So what do they collect? Your operating system version, basically which version of Windows you're on. So if you type in WinVer, you can get an idea that I'm on Windows version 21 H1 OS build 19043. That's what they're getting, okay? All right, they can do the same thing for Mac users, the same thing for Linux people. There's nothing overly shady about that. User country based on IP address. Okay, that's a little weird, but it's a general area. If your IP is from Canada like mine, they'll know that I'm a Canadian Audacity user. Again, most applications do this. If you're worrying about Audacity, if Audacity is scaring you shitless. There are literally 20, 30, 40, potentially 100 programs on your computer and cell phone right now that are doing the exact same. OS name and version, not exactly the shadiest thing, kind of up there with the first point. CPU, they're literally getting your CPU type. So for instance, I'm an i9-9900K user. If the app finds out that all of us are crashing at the same time, That'll help the development process, okay? Non-fatal error codes and messages. Project failed to open. Kind of weird why they need all of that. Seems like a lot of data, some of it pointless, but who knows? Crash reports in breakpad mini dump format. Now, this is usually something a lot of programs will ask you outright. Hey, do you want to send us user data? 
the fact that they're taking it, and I'm I'm assuming they're going to ask me if they want a crash report, kind of standard. For legal enforcement, data necessary for law enforcement, litigation, and authority requests, if any. Now, that's a little fucking weird if you think about it. What could I be doing in an audio editing application that could potentially warrant the data processed by me to be sent over to a law enforcement litigation or authority. What could I be doing? I could only imagine if I downloaded an MP3 off of the internet, which you should never do, okay? It's the most sinful thing you could ever imagine. Jesus would shit on your grave if you did so. Uh, it's the only thing I could fathom if it detected like some Linkin Park song that was downloaded on LimeWire and somehow they fed that data. I don't even think they'd do that, but like what? The whole point over here is a little weird to me, okay? It's a little weird reading that from a free open source application. I'm just saying. Now, legal grounds for processing. So basically, uh, in the first point, app analytics and improving our app, legitimate interest of WSM group to offer and ensure the proper functioning of the app. So I, I, again, I have no, the, the, the thing, it's so vague. It's like, what do you mean? The legitimate like interest in proper functioning of the application. So what, am I gonna tamper with it? Am I gonna do, am I gonna tamper with an open source application? I don't know what the, what the logic is there. L logically, I can tamper with something I have the source to. Legitimate interest of WSM group to defend its legal rights and interests. And that's for the legal enforcement point at the bottom. Again, really fucking weird. Now, if you look at the minor section, the app we provide is not intended for individuals below the age of 13. If you're under 13, please don't use the app. You heard it right here. Uh, kids cannot use an audio editing application. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure it has to do with like GDPR and COPA, but get out of here. Uh, collecting your data would definitely be a legal problem for them. Fairness, we will process personal data fairly. Lawfulness, we'll process data only on lawful grounds. Purpose limitation, data minimization, data accuracy, and data security. So blah, blah, the standard shit that you read anywhere, okay? Now, if you go down over here, data storage, the IP address will be stored in an identifiable way only for a calendar day. So one day only. IP addresses are stored as a hash, the salt for which is changed daily. So if you remember back to when we looked at passwords, the actual salting, the encryption mechanism is changed daily. The salt is not stored on any database and cannot be retrieved after its change. They store the IP hash for a year. After that, they delete it. So a bit odd in my opinion, a bit weird, but uh, that's kind of what you're looking at. Now, I, I gotta be honest with you. I can understand why there's some people that are pretty pissed at it. You know, this has been going on for over a month at this point. Audacity has been kind of edging people, at, you know, w w with spying or, or telemetry as they want to call it. And uh, I have to imagine, guys and gals, that when it comes to audio editing software, it's the last line of software I ever fucking expected to have a clause inside their privacy policy where they can send data to legal authorities for legal requests, lawful requests, litigation, and all that bullshit. Now, in this moment, is this a big deal? Uh, kind of, but here's where I want to just dial down a lot of that misinformation, and I want to dial down a lot of the fear-mongering. This is one of those cakes where you can have your cake and eat it too. And no, you don't need virtual machines as much as I want to constantly stuff that into my content. I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to use Audacity and not be spied upon. Are you ready? Now, this last section brings us to a firewall, okay? Now, I'm going to sound like a teacher over here for you real quick. I'm going to put it in the most layman terms of the world. Imagine your computer is like the world's greatest gentleman's club. Every gentleman's club has a bouncer. The firewall is effectively the bouncer. It's the security guard in front of the establishment that you have. See, the bouncer controls what goes in, what goes out, and vice versa. So the firewall is kind of like that for your computer. Now, most operating systems nowadays have firewalls built in. Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD, whatever you want to call it, they all have firewalls built in. Now, this section is more for Windows. So basically, by hitting the start button over here, you can type in the word firewall, and it'll take you to Windows Defender Firewall. So hit yes on that one, and it'll take you to this juicy menu. Now, you see this advanced settings right here? You click that once, and it opens
opens up this juicy uh, window for you. Now within this window, you have inbound ruled, outbound ruled, connection security rules, and monitoring. You wanna click on outbound rules, right? So in outbound rules in this list, you can see that I have a bunch of programs that have been auto added by Windows, right? Now you can actually use this tool to control what programs can reach the internet. So the idea here is let's say that we wanna block Steam, right? Let's say we don't want Steam to have access to its servers, right? So we can actually close Steam right here, quit it. And just for pull preface, if I open up Steam right now, you can see that it just starts off, it connects to my actual Steam account and it fires up like no tomorrow. So Steam works, but we're gonna go out the extra way and just completely block it. So by going to a new rule and let's go to program, let's go next, let's go program path. And in program files, we'll find where Steam is located. So it should be under valve and uh, we'll find Steam. So if we hit Steam and hit enter on that one, we'll just go next and we'll block the entire connection, right? And that blocks its outbound connection. So in this moment, we're gonna call this Steam. And once we find where Steam is located over here, it should be right at the top right here, Steam. Next time we open up the application, it'll try to connect. In this case, as you can see, it tries to connect to my account and it's not able to it's not gonna be able to connect to the account. Why is that? Well, that's because the bouncer in this case, Windows Firewall, stepped in and said, no Steam, you're not getting through. Get the fuck up out of here. And that's effectively what just happened, right? That's how it works. Now I can go to the Steam rule over here and it, wait, just to show you, as long as I keep retrying the connection, it should fail. But the moment I told the bouncer, hey buddy, back off, disable that rule we had. All of a sudden, Steam's gonna be like, wait a minute, I can finally talk to Valve! And that's just how it works. So, provided your program isn't broken in this case, by blocking it from the internet, you can do the exact same thing to Audacity. Again, this only applies if the program doesn't need to connect to the internet. You can't do this on the Netflix app, for instance, right? Why? Because if you tried to launch the Netflix app and told it it can't talk to Netflix, you're an idiot, okay? It can't communicate with the servers it needs to function. Now, Audacity in this case does most of its processing locally. You can basically apply the exact same rule and Audacity should work as it normally would, except when it needs to start communicating to the internet for any reason, it will not be able to. Meaning that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can basically do this simple thing and all of a sudden the spying doesn't matter anymore. And for most programs that you feel are spying on you that don't need to be connected to the internet or don't require it to function, you can do the exact same thing and walk away as if nothing fucking happened. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, Audacity is technically spying on you, but this video is there to show you how while it does spy on you, you can very easily tell it no. Because yes, while it seems that Audacity is grabbing files off your computer to send off to Russia or whatever server, you can use your computer bodyguard, your firewall, your bouncer to stand in between and say, no, 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 Audacity, what you do stays on this computer. And that's pretty much how it goes down to ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe, dislike it. If you dislike it, I am out.